So uh, adult neurogenesis has been discovered um, in 60s in songbirds, and then it was confirmed in mammals in 1980s. Um, and it has been long thought that the process is only confined to two regions in the adult mammalian brain, in the SGZ in the hippocampus and the subventricular zone. But uh, about 15 years ago, it has been discovered that new neurons are also generated in the adult hypothalamus. And these neurons are involved in regulating energy homeostasis. So uh, the current status of the field is that there are conflicting results. Some suggest that the newly generated neurons in the hypothalamus would promote obesity when uh, animals or people are exposed to HIFA diet. And there are some studies that show the opposite, that um, they may contribute to actually dampen the negative effects of obesity or HIFA diet. So we took the um, approach of uh, trying to investigate for the first time if anti-obesity compounds uh, can actually modulate the process um, and thus it may suggest that the adult neurogenesis process uh, could be a target for pharmacotherapy. I would just uh, give it brief of a context. So in year 2000, Amelia Aish, uh, when she was in the lab of Eric Nestler, discovered that antidepressants can actually promote adult neurogenesis in the hippocampus. So we took this concept to hypothalamus and we asked if anti-obesity compounds can promote adult neurogenesis in the hypothalamus. And this is very timely because the obesity um, increases uh, uh, around the world. It's a major health risk. And recently, Novo Nordisk introduced a second generation of their glucagon-like peptide agonist called Ozempic. That's the uh, term of the, of the product. And so we are interested how in the established uh, anti-obesity compounds and new ones that we are developing may affect this generation of new uh, neurons in the hypothalamus. And what we've discovered is that if we use a specific chemically modified peptide called uh, um, prolactin-releasing peptide, which uh, has added palmitoyl to one of the amino acids to make it permeable uh, to the brain from periphery, this will actually affect um, proliferation of the stem cells in the hypothalamus and it will have neuroprotective role to the new neurons. So it has a dual effect. And then to see if this has a relevance to human medicine, we um, developed in collaboration with uh, the lab of Frohlier and Merkel at Carnbridge, uh, we developed uh, hypothalamic derived uh, human neurons. And when we applied this compound to them, it activated them as well. So we think that these um, immature neurons in human uh, might be responsive to this new anti-obesity compound. What we need to understand better is uh, which specific subtypes of neurons in the hypothalamus this compound may target. The null hypothesis would be that since it's anti-obesity, it would stimulate predominantly so-called anorexigenic uh, neurons, which express POMC. These are the neurons that when stimulated would suppress appetite. So if we can identify that the compound specifically targets the neurons that suppress appetite, it would give us better understanding of how the mechanism of action of this compound works. And then we also want to understand better how not only the LIPER, this uh, palmitoid um, prolactin releasing peptide, but also other compounds, how they can enter the brain from the periphery. And this is actually regulated by the stem cells called tenocytes. So they have a dual role. They can generate new neurons, but they also regulate what enters the hypothalamus. So those are the two major um, research directions that we're going to um, do as an extension of the study that we just uh, concluded. So that would be, say, um, stage two or three of the process. So if we get um, relevant funding from UKRI, what we would like to do is to actually uh, diminish the neurogenic process, either through genetic or um, DRED means, simply to dampen the process and apply these anti-obesity compounds. And if the neurogenic process is essential for their, uh, for their mechanism of action, then abolishing the process should diminish the activity of these anti-obesity compounds. And then the stage three of, of this research would be if we can actually upregulate the neurogenic process, uh, would it even 
um, enhance the anti-obesity action of these compounds.